Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're going to be installing a powered subwoofer in this Nissan Frontier. Now, in this install, we're going to be integrating this amp and sub to an existing aftermarket radio. Let's get started. Now, one quick thing to note, we don't have the Rockford Fosgate upgraded amplified sound system. And even if we did, it actually doesn't matter a whole lot in our install here today because we already have a pre-existing installed aftermarket radio. So let's head over to the bench to show you the parts that we're going to need for our install. All right, so we're here at the bench. Now the parts that we're going to go with first and foremost is the amp and sub that we'd be installing here today. In this case, it's going to be a combo amp and sub all in one unit. Um, this is an eight inch Rockford Fosgate. This is the P300-8P has a terminal panel for all your connections here on the left hand side and this is actually ported as well which is super cool. Now in order for us to connect our amp and sub to the vehicle we do need a wiring kit. Now this does call for an 8 gauge amplifier wiring kit. This is a new concepts kit which we can link also in the description of the video. Now the last bit of accessories here all just depend on how you're installing this the vehicle. We happen to have an aftermarket radio so a line out converter like this isn't needed just because our radio has RCA pre-outs. If you didn't have an aftermarket radio and you're running the factory radio, whether you have the Rockford Fosgate system or not, you'll need some sort of line-out converter, and this is one that we do recommend. We'll link down in the description for you. Simply just connects into the speaker outputs, power and ground, and provides all you need for your signal and remote turn on for the amp and sub. So at this point of time, let's head to the car and start planning our wiring route from the battery area through the firewall into the cabin of the truck. All right, so with the hood open, our battery is on the passenger side. You'll notice it has a positive and negative terminal. We'll be hooking the power for our amplifier to the positive post here on the battery. Now we do need to run that power wire from that positive post through an inline fuse, which we'll have as close to the battery as possible. And then from that fuse, we are gonna go through a grommet. Either side will work fine. In our case, since we're installing this, on the floor behind the driver's seat. We're gonna go up and over that factory loom there, down through the agrament there at the firewall. Now here on the driver's side, if we follow that big loom all the way down, you'll notice there is the factory grommet and actually has a little nipple or protrusion that you can cut off in order for you to have access through that grommet to run your own wiring as needed. So we'll do that. Additionally, there is a secondary grommet there that you could use as well, just another option. Now what we did here is grab a wire hanger and actually poke just right above that uh, aftermarket wire that's already going through the firewall. And we fill that wire coming through from the other side. We're using this wire hanger to help pull our power wire through the firewall. So let's go underside to see where that passes through. Here up underneath, you can see that's where it comes on through. There's our metal here. So what we're going to do is grab our power wire, we're going to tape it through on the top side, and we're going to pull it through from up underneath. All right, so what we've done here is we prepared our wire, we taped our wire to it, we're going to fish it through the firewall there. Now we're going to lube this up a lot with some soap and water, especially with the grommet there. That's just going to allow us to easily pass everything through uh, without it getting bound up. So with this all ready to go, let's go and lube this up and pull it from the inside. All right, so with that wire pulled on through, what we did is we split loom that wire as it passed through the firewall there. We split loomed it, went along the factory loom on the firewall there. Now in between our factory fuse panels. Now what we did is we created kind of an S-band fuse mount. We snagged a bolt there, as you can see. So we had a place to mount our fuse holder nice and snug. As always with all our fuse holders we put wire ferrules on both ends of our wire with some heat shrink so it's nice and sealed there that's nice and tidy and then this end will go up. Now on our positive side of the battery we could go there however they're behind factory fuses we don't want to put extra loads on those fuses so we're going to go to the center stud because it's directly off the, t the stud of the, the battery and that's where we're going to put our 8 gauge ring terminal as soon as we're ready to go to hook that up. So for now everything's split loomed, zip tied, nice and clean, fuse holder is all done. 
everything's done basically and tidy up underneath the hood. What we need to do from this point forward is go inside the cab and start running our wire to our desired amplifier location. All right, so we got that all pulled apart here, everything held on with clips. Now what we did here is instead of taking this all apart, uh, we're going to go up underneath the carpet and since our amp sub combo is going to sit here up underneath the seat, put a little slit here on the carpet and then we ran our power and ground out here. Now as for the ground, there's a couple of different places you can find a threaded stud and clean this up here, but you're relying on the spot weld, so that's an okay ground. You can also take this apart, find a factory ground. What we did here is we cleaned up the paint with a wire brush and tapped a 10 millimeter um, there, a nice 10 millimeter bolt with a lock washer, and we got it all zip tied there in place. So that is all good, as you saw us do that, and ran that on out. I also have a base knob here. Now next thing here through that same hole is the other way. We're gonna run our RCA's remote turn on wire all the way to the passenger side up front to the back of the radio. Now here at the bench, we do have our RCA harness that came with our powered subwoofer enclosure and our RCA. So we basically taped our remote turn on wire, put a little ferrule on there, got that all ready. Um, everything's been loomed up. We hooked up our RCA cables that came with our amplifier wiring kit. We put some heat shrink just so they don't come apart there. And then basically we taped it every about six inches or so all the way through. And basically from this harness side, it's gonna connect into our subwoofer here, run along the passenger side, and we're gonna run this to the radio cavity. So we will need to pull out the radio temporarily so we can hook our remote turn on wire to the remote trigger wire of our radio. Generally, it's a blue-white in most instances. And then our uh, RCA cable needs to go to the subwoofer output on the back of the radio. Now we started running our RCA's remote turn on wire this way. Now, just like we did on the driver's side, we went ahead and moved our kick panels. We're gonna run it up and along, up underneath here. And now we gotta get the radio out temporarily. So on the back of the radio, we can make our RCA to the subwoofer output connection and the remote turn on wire to the back of the radio. All right, so we're here in the truck. We need to temporarily just pop out our radio here. It happens to be an aftermarket one to allow us access to make our final connections, RCA and our remote turn on wire. Now, in this radio removal, whether it's factory or aftermarket, it's gonna be very similar, or if not the same. We're gonna go ahead and just pop this out of the way. So we have a trim panel remover. What we need to do is pop this upper pocket up, just up and out of the way. Literally all just held on with clips. And it's gonna expose two Phillips screws here on the top that need to be removed. And finally, the third screw here in the center. So with those three screws removed, we're gonna go ahead and now kind of give the radio tug here. The whole thing should just come free. And again, we just barely need to give us enough access here to make our final connections. All right, so I went ahead and made those connections there. RC connections are good uh, to the subwoofer output. Made our connection for our blue white remote turn on wire. It just added it to its current connection. Just used a crimp cap there. Um, wire harness is in our favor. We may have to go ahead and clean that up. Everything is just massively taped together. Other than that, um, those connections are good to go. So once we're good back behind the radio, we're gonna go, go ahead and reassemble in reverse order. We uh, basically fish our wiring up, up underneath the dash, up into the stereo cavity. So at this point in time, let's reassemble everything and uh, do a final test. All right, so with our powered subwoofer all connected, every connection's been made, we went ahead and put the power terminal on 
that post here. Now we didn't do that until we removed the negative off the battery just to be safe. We're loosening the 12 millimeter nut, put our ring terminal on, tighten it back down, and then put the negative back on the battery. So at this point, we are done under the hood. All right, so we got the radio all back in here. Everything's all cleaned up, except finish up mounting our base knob and zip tying a couple wires. Everything's back together here. Got our eight inch powered subwoofer all in. Nice thing is, everything just goes right through the carpet there and can fully disconnect in the event down the road. Customer needs more space here. And that's the beauty of one of these powered subwoofers. Um, very versatile and it's nice and robust. So if you have to put stuff on top, it's not gonna hurt the woofer as well. So if you have any questions on what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. This has provided plenty of base if you're wondering. Puts out about 300 watts RMS and uh, is plenty for a Extended cab Nissan Frontier. If you have the four-door cab, we'll link different parts and boxes and options there in the description of the video as well. If you want to see how we did a four-channel amplifier on this generation truck, we'll also link that video in the description for you. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw, and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time, and we'll see you in the next video.